My name is Fred Gould and I've lived here all my life at Batch Farm, East Penner, Shetland Mallet. We started cheese making, my father started cheese making when I was 11 in 1962 and we've always made cheese in the old fashioned way made out of cylindrical cheese with the rind on. It's all made from our own cow's milk and we sell quite a lot to local shops and to several supermarkets who I am better say the name of. And um, do you make the milk on the farm and do you raise yes. the cattle? Y yes, the cattle are milked, we milk about 450 dairy cows in three separate units. Two units are sold to a local big cheese maker, reasonably local, and we use the third lot for our own use to make our cylindrical cheese out of. Do you, uh, do you eat your own cheese then? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you, uh, how does it taste? Is it like Our cheese we make is fairly mature, and um, yes, we eat all our own cheese. It is graded at three months and six months and again at nine months. Any cheese that are not up to the standard that we require is drawn out and sold off as mild cheese and the mature cheese are sold at approximately 10 to 12 months of age. Okay. So, how, so how long would you store it in a place like this for then? It's stored in here all its life. We have cheese in this store up to a 12 months of age, some a little bit older, but we don't like it to go too much over a 12 month. And how, how do you reach the top, the top of the cheese then? Oh, we have um, a forklift truck that goes up to the top to lift them up. The cheese have to be turned pre occasionally, so we just bring the whole stillages down to turn them over and then put them back up again. Do I do it yeah, myself? Do do I can do it, but I don't usually do it as a rule. <laughs> do you not like heights? Or is it just the oh, I don't worry too much about heights. There's not high in here. I don't like high heights, but I don't worry about a, a low height. <laughs> so how, before, um, you said it's been doing quite a long time, did you always have the forklift track then? Or was there another way of getting them up there? No, we've always had it since we've had this store. We've had this store for approximately 10 years. And before that, it was all stored at um, Mendit Foods in the city of Wales, which is now all covered in houses. So when that closed down and was sold off for building, the, one, the cheese makers that were left had to make their own storage facilities. So is it a big um, a company in Wales then? Well, Mendit Foods, yes, it was quite a big company, but it's all been sold off now and owned by Dairy Crest, which is a big factory conglomerate. So did that put a lot of people out of jobs then? Um, no doubt some that were working in the big store were they put out of jobs at the time, for sure. I don't know where they went to. But each farmer had to build his own cheese store and um, you know, do his own storage facilities when that all wound up. We were given notice that it was going to happen. So um, do you sell a lot to the local people then, or is it... Um, yes, we try, we've got quite a lot of local shops. We've got a van, we go to London and do the farmers markets in London. I don't do it myself, but we've got a chap that does it and some young ladies that's every weekend and then we sell to three other supermarkets so do you take like a big van load of cheese up to london then? yeah it's got to be all cut up into their little pieces and they sell it on a store it's not huge sales but you know it's it gets our name around yeah, <laughs> definitely. yeah. Yeah, farmers markets on stores. They do some, we do several in the 
south and west of the area as well, local farmers markets. I don't know how, it's not huge sales, but you know, it's, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, they're all, we don't, we've got what you call flying herds. We do not rear our own replacements because we have got, not the ground, we've got the 450 cows which eat a lot of grass and we buy the heifers in, calf down at about two and a half years of age and then they're milked for another four or five, maybe six years and that's their, and then they're finished with. Do you uh, sell them on for meat then? Yes, yes, they go on for barren there. Uh, do you keep any cattle? Is there any favourite ones that you like and you think, oh, I don't <laughs> want to sell that one, I just keep that one? Um, no. <laughs> no <laughs> well, daisies running around? They're all freeze branded nowadays. Yeah, we look after our cattle, but we don't get, they're not like household pets. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when they stop giving milk, that's... Yeah. <laughs> but do you keep any other animals there, or is it just cattle? Dairy cattle. Yeah. Yes, most all dairy cattle. We there's no pigs. We haven't, we used to keep some pigs, but we don't keep pigs now. That's not very good job. Got two donkeys. Two donkeys. <laughs> what are their names? I don't really know. To be quite honest, <laughs> they come from. Um, they come from Western Sands when my daughter was. She's now 22 and she was a little girl sort of so high and they've never really, put, they did go back in the first place but they have just, um, they don't seem to want them back now so they stay here. <laughs> did uh, she ride them though? Yeah, yeah, she, yeah, she yeah. used to ride them when she was little but they don't know. Oh. No. Do they just, uh, do they mingle with the cattle? Yeah, they don't wander around here, they're out in the field on their own. I suspect they'll stay here forever and ever. <laughs> No, we haven't kept pigs for 10 years or more. Our housing facilities for pigs got out of date and dilapidated and pigs didn't pay very much. And we've got an outlet for the whey. That's why we were keeping them to drink the whey from the process of the cheese making. But we've got an outlet for that now. So, you know, we haven't kept them. My father used to like the pigs, but he's got old now and he doesn't do it. So that's that. So this is a family business then, it kind of, does it just... Yes. Down? Will your daughter take it afterwards? Or? I've got a daughter of 22 and a son who's 16. He's still at um, school and in a college and one thing and the other. I don't know. I would like to think so, but who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my father come here about 70 years ago and he rented the farm, what we're at now, under the Pennard, East Pennard Estate and it was sold off in 1948 and he bought his little bit that he was renting as most of the farmers did at the time and we've been here ever since, gradually built it up. Yeah, he was farming, or his father was farming at Wantstro, which is the other side of Shepton, but when the war broke out, I think he came down to here and rented a farm, and his brother stayed up at the home farm. But his brother, since he's gone on now, so. So, um, you have your own cheese shop, Yeah. Farm. Yes, we have a small shop which we sell to local people and one and another. There's no, we don't keep a Pacific person in there all the time, a bell to ring and somebody, if there's a bell, pops in to serve them. We do sell quite a bit to locals and, and then we got to deal with the shop customers that come and pack the farmers markets, cheese as well. We've got our own sort of small packing facilities to do that. So what would be your, um, your normal day on like the cheese farm then? What would be your, would you just be running around doing bits of everything? 
Yeah, we've got an actual cheese maker who's been with us for over 30 years that makes the cheese. And there's one part-time lad that comes in and there's another lad that's been with us for about 25 years. And they do the cheese. My sister oversees it and does quite a bit of the work. Personally, myself, I'm sort of more outside seeing to the cows, but they see to the actual cheese making. Y that just the way that's just the way it's evolved, I guess. <laughs> okay. So, um, you have, are they permanent staff then that supply the cheese? Yes, cheese? yes, they're fairly permanent. Well, the cheesemaker's been with us, I said, 30 years or more. And he is retired now, but we're making cheese three days a week because we can store the milk for a day at the moment. So he comes in when we're actually making the cheese and the rest of them have to see to the, you know, the packing and the cleaning and what have you. So um, what is the actual process then from, say, raising the cattle to finish? The actual processing of the cheese making, the milk is brought in in the morning, cooled down to four degrees Celsius. We do pasteurise our milk. The pasteurising is to heat the milk to 70, I can't remember the exact date, 72 degrees, and then it is cooled back down again. Pasteurisation, most milk is packed. There are some cheese makers, three of them that I can think of, that use unpasteurised milk. But we ourselves use pasteurised milk for the cheese making. The pasteurisation is the first process of the cheese making. Then starter is added. Starter is a culture of milk made up with sourness to get the acidity moving in the actual milk which makes the cheese. The whole process of the actual cheese making takes about four and a half hours. Um, once you've added your starter, then rennet is added to form, to set the milk, to form a coagulation. It is then cut into small pieces, about the size of peas. All this is done mechanically. And then it is stirred and scalded. Cheese making process is no more than cooking, really. Um, it is then cooked or scalded as we say for an hour, stirred for an hour, which sets the solids of the milk from the whey. And then everything is drained off and the whey is separated from the actual solids of the milk. And the solids of the milk is what we make into the cheese. It is then just turned till it gets to an acidity of about five Five, and then we grind it up into pieces. Salt is added to kill off the acidity and keep it. It is then put into cylinder molds and weighed off at approximately 27 kilos per cheese. The pressing process is done over three days of the cheese. There's different processes in between. And then this makes a cylindrical cheese, as you can see with the ones beside of us. So is that um, unique to you as a cheesemaker, or is that kind of the process across all the cheesemakers? No, um, cylindrical cheese with the rind on now are not made nothing like so many as they used to be 30 years ago. We do get a bit of a premium price on them. But most of the cheese now in the big fat trees and the large ones are made into a 40 pound block, which is a so or so square, and they're wrapped in plastic and put into plastic boxes and piled, stacked, piled right high. But this is more of this, the way we do it is more of the old fashioned way and we do get a little bit of a premium price for still keeping this going. So how come you 
reason they don't do the cylindrical tubes anymore? Is it just well, it's quite a lot of extra work making the cylindrical cheese as to the block cheese. They can store them on pallets and, you know, they can pack them all up right up to the ceilings and <laughs> they can do it in whether we do in a small amount they can do vast amounts at the same cost and you said it's a bit like cooking do, are you a good cook do you cook well? i don't really know <laughs> i don't starve <laughs> no um no i wouldn't say i'm a good cook i don't actually do the cheese making myself but i have made it in the past. I know that if I'd done it for a period of time, I dare say I'd soon get back into it. Is there quite a bit of skill involved in it? Yes, yeah. This sort of tweaking the little bits. Well, it's like a cook, I guess. Everybody could cook, but making a cake and making a good cake is the difference. <laughs> okay. So, um, how long would you say um, if you had someone who you were just starting to Well, as I said, the cheesemaker we have now, he came from a big cheesemaking factory at the time. It was over 30 years ago. But I dare say if a young fellow came in and was really keen to learn, he'd soon pick up the process of doing it. Cooling the milk, as we do now, down to the real, real cool of about 4 centigrade, and the pasteurisation standardize the making of cheese and if you can standardize it and you get it good one day if you do the same every day and your milk's the same every day and your starter you try and make the same hopefully your cheese will turn out reasonably the same every day but there is some variation in them slightly now but not like it used to be years ago so you can well, we try to, yes. The, ta the maturity of a cheese and the flavour of it is all to do with the, the longer you keep a cheese, the more flavour it gets on it, the stronger it becomes. In the beginning, it's just like, well, it's like eating curd. There's very little, it's just a rubbery substance and very little taste to it. But the longer you keep it, the more flavour it comes. There is a period of time when it gets too strong. It doesn't want to be... So some people, the older people, they like a real strong cheese. I don't personally, but some people do. So um, what's the maximum length you keep it? Um, we have some cheese in here over two years old, but they're, they're, we haven't kept them for the reason of keeping them. We've kept them because sales have been a bit slow. And, but personally, we don't like to keep them no more than 12, 14 months if we can help it. So what would you do with cheese that kind of has been left there? Well, go, go over the top, as they say. Um, a lot of it goes for processing. And what, what exactly is processing? Well, we've got to sort out the rind from the good cheese and it goes into flavouring various products there's no money in it for us anyway but it you know it gets rid of them that's what we try not to let that happen if we can help for but occasionally things don't go as well as they should do and um so is there quite a few cheese makers in the service yes there are quite a few there's several real big ones in this area, the southwest, but there are quite a few smaller ones, our own size. We produce, we do in the cheese approximately, what would we make, about three, about three and a half thousand of these cheese a year, that's a year, and there's several ones making that. There's three, as I said, unpasteurized, uh, makers, they're smaller than ourselves slightly, and there's about four or five making cylindrical cheese in this area that are pasteurised. And are they your competition then? Would you, uh, would you say you're better than them? 
I suppose we are. When we were at Mend at Foods, we were all in a group together and they done the selling, but we have sort of, that's all finished, I suppose, or part of history. And we have to do our own selling now. And if you're doing your own selling, well, obviously you're in competition with everyone else, aren't you? But I don't know, I don't like to think that we're in competition with them, but sometimes when that happens. Do you know them personally though? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Do you have a cheese making party? Cheese no, no, there? not parties as such. We belong to the um, Cheese Makers Federation meetings, which is held on the Bath and West showground. And we have a meeting sort of periodically and discuss various things. But it has separated up a little bit over the years. What kind of things would you discuss when you go to the uh, society? Oh, more shows, you know, supporting pro promotions and one thing and the other to sell cheese as a group, but that didn't always happen. Quite a lot to do with various shows which we support and do things at quite a lot at the Bath and West show, obviously, because it's on the doorstep. So, would there be drink at these parties? Did you it's not a wild party. <laughs> I assume it would be. No. Cheese <laughs> no, it's only a daytime meeting. Cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, would you say they would make it in the same way as you, though? Because if they do cylindrical yeah, yeah, exactly it's, yeah, way. more or less the same way. Some of them are block, the big block makers, they would make it slightly different, but the actual recipe of all cheese, wh whatever make it is, it's the same recipe to start with. It's just a process of separating the curds from the whey, the solids of the milk from the whey, because milk, as you know, is What's it, about 95 or 6 percent water anyway and the water is the way and you've only got your five six seven percent of solids to separate out the whole process of cheese making is virtually the same it's just what you do the process through the middle afterwards where they make double gloucester or stilton or any of the other varieties that there is nowadays the actual starting process is much about the same Oh, I'm bound to say cheddar cheese, aren't I? Because we make it. But there's this. It's not good. What your taste is, I quite like Stilton or any other of the varieties. Some of the softer cheese I'm not particularly keen on, but it's just your preference. But Have I, you ever experimented with making any other types of cheese apart from cheddar? No, but we do. My nephew is adding flavours to cheese and that's the curd at the end and then he adds flavour cheese to it for the farmers markets. We do do a bit of that and we've started doing it but that's for our own use for on the farmers markets because if you do these farmers markets you've got to have a variety of different things to make your stall up. It's no good to go there just for like cheddar cheese or something that you want. Various other makes as well. So we do add flavours to them, but we've never made double Gloucester or nothing of that. So uh, what kind of flavours would he add? What's he experimented with? He's done chilli and chives. I don't know what he has done. He's done about five or six various flavours. I don't really know what they are, to be quite honest. And has that just been his idea then? Yeah, yeah, he's promoted that and got it going. Okay. Yeah, it's not a large amount, but it's a, you know, all helps. Yeah, yeah, it sort of helps you to do the farmer's markets and what have you. And have you seen, like, has that come back through in the sales? Is it yes, yes, you've got, like I said earlier on, you've got to have, if you're going to do a farmer's market, you've got to have a variety of products to sell, and that helps the variety. Yeah. 